Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be revisiting the Linux on the Z architecture on the mainframe subject. We've already discussed this a couple of times. I also have a video about how to obtain a ready-made image of Linux, um, Z Linux for the, for the mainframe that I had created. That was a Debian. So let's see if we can find that video, Moshix. And then here we say Z Linux. And as you can see, uh, there is a couple of videos on that. I have one with a Linux running on a real mainframe, that's M60. And then uh, M34, about uh, a year ago or so, made a video where I showed how to obtain a ready-made Linux image that I had created with Debian and um, and how to get it and uh, and move it down to your computer from my uh, from a uh, file sharing uh, place that i had and then how to create a linux uh, a hercules instance for instance and get it to run now uh, sir i tried several months later to recreate that install and make a video out of it but in the meantime something was kind of seriously broken with uh, hercules and i couldn't get it to install anymore now um and so today we're making a video because somebody sent me a link to a new website that went up just recently uh, probably uh, just a few days or maybe a few weeks ago it doesn't say the date the date here but this guy or this person astro baby uh, um, has an install for ubuntu and ubuntu is something that i like to work on a lot uh, this for instance that I'm, this machine that i'm running here is, is ubuntu um, and uh, and so he has an install procedure for Ubuntu and I haven't even read the whole document down to the bottom yet, but I thought we'll do this together and uh, and we'll get it to work. And so you don't have to obtain a ready-made image of Zilinux from me. You can just uh, create it yourself by following this video. I'll be doing this on Linux. It's obviously also possible to do this on, on Windows. And my intention is that today we're gonna do it on Linux, but if this works, if this install procedure works, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually do it on the account I have on uh, on a real mainframe with uh, ZVM and do it under ZVM just for the heck of it. So um, this website is not really that beautiful to look at. There's a lot of stuff here that doesn't really pertain to us. But what we're going to do is do the stuff that we need to do. So, so if you... Um, I'll put all the commands in the description below this video, or maybe I will make a document and upload it to a GitHub repository because going through all this stuff, there's several choices you have to make. For instance, if you want to do compressed, then you do this. If you don't do uncompressed, you do another command. Some people are going to get confused. So I'll just do the sequence of commands that works for me, and then we'll see um, how to, um, if, if, if this leads to success. And if not, we'll all have learned something from this video. So I'm gonna post this video regardless whether the install works or not. So I'll start by creating make dear Zubuntu. Go in there and let's see if I have enough free space. I have about 28 gigabytes, so that's good. So here, first of all, of course, we need a an install DASD image, a, a disk that the mainframe sees on where to install Z Linux on. And by the way, I will not go into the merits of having Linux run on a mainframe or not. This is totally beside the discussion. I'm only going to show you how to get Ubuntu up and running if this procedure works. I don't know myself. So uh, it says here we should do a DASD image for a DASD init, create an, an image, compressed image for Linux. Um, but uh, with this the, with this uh, volume ID, but this is a volume. This is a, a type 3, 3390, which is only about three gigabyte. I want to have a type 9, which is nine gigabytes. Let's see if we can first of all get this to work. So let's start with this das in it. And if you just do das in it, it will give you all the options. So let's do das in it minus Z for compressed minus LFS. Um, and then minus Linux, which is important because this will do null track images, um, and 
and then we say Ubuntu disk 3390-9 Lin 120 and of course we need a T here okay that's done what I also do here while we add it I'll make the font here a little bit bigger so it's easy to read for all of you although the um, the main age cohort in this channel is uh, 24 to 29 age group of 24 years to 29 years some people are significantly older and they will benefit from a bigger font I guess so let's do that um, change settings appearance if we go to 16 points okay resize this a little bit and let's keep this here so I hope you can all see this so we have now an image of course the image is still empty but it can take up to nine gigabytes um, so now we have to create the the config file for Hercules and I work in the world's best editor and if you don't agree that Vim is the world's best editor then you're free to post in the comments the editor that you like to use on Linux or Windows uh, the most very interesting to see what you what you have so let's see here this is the configuration file I'll post it here um, so already I see a problem here. He calls this Ubuntu, Ubuntu disk, but here he calls it Debian. So we'll have to, of course, fix that. Um, Ubuntu, how did we call it? Ubuntu dot disk. Okay, and then two CPUs is not enough. I need lots of CPUs because Linux is going to be slow on an emulated mainframe. That's why you're also going to do it later on on a real mainframe on the ZVM. Uh, like this four and then uh, main size. I'll give this uh, 6,000, six gigabytes. Expand size. I don't really need expand size. Expand memory is additional memory that is also addressable. It was it was really a trick around the MVS ESA days when uh, the address space was confined to 31 bit. So what IBM created is you, you'd have real RAM, which was we could go up to 31 bits, so therefore two gigabytes. And then you could also have expanded memory, which was memory that was not mapped into the address space. And so the only use for that expanded memory is for the paging subsystem of MBS ESA to page first to that RAM, which you could of course map to as real RAM, not as a as a as a virtual address space. And then only when it was when it was running out of memory to page into into the expanded memory, it wouldn't start page to the disk. But the amazing thing is that to page from the expanded uh, memory into the page um, uh, uh, data sets on the disk, it would first have to bring the page back into, of course, into into real RAM memory because the page fold could only handle it there. So it was kind of a funny thing, but this. This has nothing to do with Linux, so we don't need to. We can, in fact, delete this whole line. I'll make this available for you to download this configuration file. So this should work already. Um, let's see if Ubuntu coughs on it. Oops. Yeah. And you can see here, it takes it. We have four CPUs. So this would already work. If I'm going too fast, I'm going to go here through a good clip. I don't want to make this a two-hour video. Maybe will become because I don't know what the install procedure for Ubuntu is on uh, on the on the mainframe. But uh, if it's too fast, freeze the frame and check the commands. Um, okay, so Ubuntu. Okay, so this is going to be the. Um, the addressing scheme is going to be 11.100 for the um, Linux inside the mainframe 
and this is going to be the IP address of the channel-to-channel -channel adapter, which is a point-to-point -point, uh, network interface from the point of view of Linux outside. Alrighty. So now it wants to set up networking this whole part here, which we really don't need. I have a script that can get around all of this. So I will post the script here as well. And maybe I even have um, I used to have a Debian installed with a script that we can use. So I will stop my laptop and copy it over so that we can uh, make use of that. I'm starting a laptop booting my laptop as we speak okay and the laptop is not coming up let me freeze the video for a second okay so we got this done i copied the network script as well as um, the debian configuration file that I had created back maybe a year, year and a half ago. Um, so, um, so why we look here, this is the Debian um, uh, configuration for Hercules. And, uh, and so, sorry, copying it over again. Okay, so, this, what you can see here is that the address I use is inside is 10.1.1.2 and outside 10.1.1.1. And I think I'm going to use this scheme here, not the one that he has here. I don't like that so much. And then the network setup script is very simple. I reset first the firewall, the Linux firewall, and then I enable network address translation uh, to and from the instance running inside the uh, the... Uh, the Linux on the mainframe. We need to change obviously this part here because that's a wireless adapter for my laptop. And I assume that we have, what is the, yeah, we have ENS 160. Um, so that's what we're going to have to use here. Set, we'll go here. And very good. So we set network address translation to and from the instance, and then we uh, enable packet forwarding between interfaces on Linux, and we also enable the ARP proxy, so the pack ARP can travel to and from these two instances, the Linux, the underlying Linux, and the Linux inside the mainframe. So now we have that going. Um, I would just copy the network setup here, because this also looks nice. Okay, so let's copy this and Ubuntu CNF and let's put it here. Okay, make this a little bit nicer. Okay. So we have now something that's a little bit nicer to look at. Beautify this a little bit. Okay, we have two terminals which are enough, so we can work with this. Um, so now we need to apparently download the Ubuntu distribution, and let's see how we're going to do that in a second. Um, let's first start the network, set network, because that's what he he says to do here and let's go obtain this Ubuntu server where do we get this from is there a link yeah there's a link here oh Ubuntu x390 S390X. Where do we get this from? OK. 
Okay. ISO images are here. So I'll also post, post the uh, link to it. Accept and download. So we put in here Moshix, Moshix YouTube channel. Purchasing support for. I'm not really purchasing support. Why do I have to? Per drawer per year. I don't really want to do that. I just want to download the image. How do I do that? Okay, cloud images. Yeah, here it is. I found it. So let's search for 390. There it is. But that's an image, that's not an ISO. Okay, here it is. Found it server I will post this uh, of course here I will get it in the meantime you can see here my uh, an image here by the way this is all running on an Intel NUC um, let's see if I have here yeah that's this Intel NUC here with uh, two CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, it's it's on IPv6 as you can see here. It's connecting through IPv6, not IPv4. It's interesting. So this is downloading it now. Um, looks like this is going to take a while. Um, so maybe I'll pause it here, and I'll be back when it's fully downloaded. Thank you. Okay, so finished downloading it. Here it is. And so now, of course, we have to mount it. And there is a way in, in uh, Linux to mount an ISO image through what's called loopback interface. And that's what this command here is for. Um, so we're going to do, um, we're going to mount it on, let's say, let's make a directory on the temp called, is it Ubuntu? And then we mount it there. So we say mount. This command here doesn't really make sense. You don't mount directly on the mount. Oh. Um, I'll do it like this loop. And I'll say, what is it? Ubuntu under TMP Ubuntu. Okay, so now if I go to zoo, TMP Ubuntu. I see the install image here. Perfect. So now uh, we can start Hercules. Hercules Ubuntu CNF. And it's now up and running. Now, before I do that, actually, I want to have a second screen session so I can switch back and forth. You can use Tmux or Biobu or one of the dozens of such utilities. I use screen because I know it. Okay, so let's do this again. Uh, Ubuntu. Alrighty, so we have our four CPUs. We have, oh, but it doesn't see the disk. That's weird. Why don't we have a disk? We need a disk. We have Ubuntu. Oh, I know why. Because it wants it in DASDI. And that makes a lot of sense, so we can have it nice and tidy. So I had actually my this because this comes from my config file. My config file was a little tidier than what he has here. So let's make a subdirectory dasd, and let's move uh, move Ubuntu disk into dasd, and I'm also going to rename it. I'm going to call it like this. So let's copy this, 
because if I want to attach more files, I want to be able to. This is the way we work in the Hercules world. I want to be able to see what device it's, it's meant to be. Um, so let's look at Ubuntu again. And let's name it properly. Okay. Very well now. So now when we start. And here's my nine gigabyte disk, 10,000 cylinders. Okie dokie. Mm. Now the only other thing is we have to set the network. Set network. Okay, here it is. Yeah, I now set the underlying Linux, which of course is still running inside and VMware and virtual machine, but that's let's just disregard all that for the rest of this video. So this is the IP of the underlying Linux and dot two is gonna be the Linux inside. So we got this done. Now let's IPL our the ISO image for the first time. So we say IPL TMP oh, where is it? TMP Zubuntu. Oh, okay, yeah. So Zubuntu and Ubuntu INS. Okay. Um, more recent processor hardware. Detect the machine type. Oh, we have a problem with the Linux. That's interesting. Let's shut down. And let's do a version. Oh. It actually wants a newer version of Hercules. That's very interesting, and I know why. Um, so I guess we'll have to uh, build our own Hercules. Let's first remove this one. Yes. And then let's go obtain, I think there's a link here somewhere, a more recent. Mm, where is it? Yeah, let's go here and obtain clone or download. So let's do like this, uh, git clone. It's downloading Hercules. This is Hercules 4.0.0. I just released a video a couple of days ago on how to build Hercules. So um, the, we, today we're gonna show it a slightly different way to build it because some people have commented there is a CMake. And of course, uh, that's uh, also a good way to build it. So we just should do CMake here and then uh, um, let's go here to GD build. Oops. Let's do a build directory. And then we do a CMake. Oop, apt install CMake. Let's do that as well. Okay, CMake. Um, to source, so let's do CMake. Uh, root Hyperion. Okay, starting to build. easy the system is. Four CPUs but very fast ones. 16 gigabytes of memory so this shouldn't be too long. Um, build files have been written. Okay so now we can say uh, make install. That's the other way to uh, build Hercules. We saw the other one that I showed in the previous video. Uh, let's see which video number that was. Uh, emotions. Uh, 
uh, M82. So in M82, I show how to build Hercules, and there we use the uh, dot slash configure approach, the older approach. CMake is uh, a newer approach, as you can also see from the colorful way it's building it. Both work just fine. So right now we're building. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's running only on one thread on one processor. My approach uses uh, all the present uh, processes or, or threads to build, which is makes it much faster. But uh, we'll just stick with this now. And then once we build the circles, we should be able to IPL because that has the latest capabilities. And in in uh, in the previous video in the M82 where I showed that there's all these versions of Hercules out there. The one that I had running on this system is the one that you can install with apt install Hercules on Ubuntu. And then it, it got me a, a Spinhawk, which is version 3.13, which is a fine version. Uh, it has some of the most important patches from and extensions from my Hyperion 4.0 backported, but evidently not everything is there. So. It's done 65%, almost there. So you can see now in real time how long it takes to build. My build uh, process is faster because I spread out on all the available processors. But we're almost done. And that's a very fast little beast. Uh, the nooks are fast because I have only NVMe disks, which are blazing fast. And it has a 3. Point, uh, I think 3.5 or 3.7 gigahertz processor i7 so it's pretty fast okay so we're done um, let's say which Hercules and it has a Hercules let's run it no such file while he wants let's run it against a configuration file Ubuntu what oh we need to yeah Yes, so we have version 4.0, it has uh, IPv6 support, and it has BZIP support, which is important because we're working with, with a compressed disk image. That's fine, so now we can say temp ubuntu ubuntu.ins, and now it's not complaining that much anymore. So this is gonna work a while. And now when we enter uh, stuff through the console, oh, why is this not working? This is a spectacular failure here. Start again from scratch. Hercules Ubuntu CNF. Okay, that looks better. Sorry about this, folks. So again, IPL TMP Ubuntu Ubuntu .ins. Missing facilities 4549. What that might? I don't know what that is. So it's bits 45 and 49. Um, that is very interesting. So we have to change the configuration file somewhat. So um, let's see here on my laptop how I configured my old thing here. Okay, so we need to say Hercules. Oh, what is it? Ubuntu. Um, we have to enable certain bits. And so we say. So 
then we have to say um, and I also want to enable certain bits called arc level enable bit 44 and now also bits 45 and <laughs> what's going on here? Okay, um, bit thirty seven and also. Let's see if this works. Okay. IPL dot TMP dot Zubuntu dot INS. Okay, so this is now IPLing. Yeah, it's running pretty fast at 100 MIPS per second. Yes, so now Linux is coming up and that's of course the installation image of... of uh, I'll make also the configuration file of course available for you guys to download. And so now we enter the phase where we interact with the installation image through um, through the console. So first of all, we want to say it gives us a choice. We want to install through CTC or um, QETH or IUCV or virtual IO. So we're going to say here that we're going to do um, CTC, channel to channel adapter, because that's what we gave it. And then um, I'm going to say here one. And we'll say one again. Let me read this here. That's fine. So uh, here we give two, of course. And protocol for this connection, I'm going to call it. Uh, protocol for this connection Z Linux. Configure the network. Networking can be configured either by entering all the information manually. Uh, auto configure network? No. And we're going to give it now the IP address that I had to put in. So which is uh, 10.1.1.2. And that's the IP for Linux inside the mainframe. Okay, and the netmask, of course, is the standard 24-bit uh, default gateway. Yes, that's correct. And the name server, we're going to use the Google name server. See if we can detect the link. Yes. Uh, we're going to call this uh, Ubuntu. Domain name, Moshix. Generating SSH host key. And that's why it's important to have a screen session going on, which I start with screen minus A, because now we can SSH into it and we don't need to start a whole other party environment here I can just uh, I can just uh, start a uh, it wants the password 
for remote. Okay, so we, let's set the password. We're going to say Moshix is the password. And again, and always put in a dot. You can see here, I always put in a dot at the beginning of my answers because that's the way that Hercules knows to pass on whatever I write after the dot to the instance running inside Hercules. Okay, so now we should be able to check careful against fingerprint. And let's start a new session. And it says to do 10.1.1.2. Oh, it says we have to. Yeah, that's because I already had a, the Debian instance running, so I have to um, known host. Uh, let's try it again. And we're in, so that's that's working. Network console operation. Um, I guess we do installer. And this is not going to be as fast as in a real machine because we're obviously emulating here uh, on four CPUs, but and it's doing 50, 60 MIPS, but it's still emulated so we're going to use i think here it looks like pretty standard ubuntu united states of america united states uh that's fine and so from here on it's just a normal installation i don't know if i want to record all of that because uh, this is going to take a little while so i'll reconnect as soon as i finished um I finished installing Ubuntu. This is no different than installing an Ubuntu on, a, on an x86 machine. So I'll, I'll be right back. So I'm back. This has actually been going faster than I thought, about two, three minutes after I've stopped the recording of, the, of, this, of, my, uh, of my desktop. I got to this point here, um, writing the partition table to the disk, yes. You can see here DASD. This is, uh, of course, uh, mainframe language, and so seems seems like Ubuntu is aware of uh, the stuff. So it's working. So it's installing now and we can go on to observe Hercules working hard as you can see here 78 MIPS um, and it's a single it looks like it's a single threaded application the installer because it's mostly running on one CPU let's see what the fastest max rates will tell us how fast Hercules was emulating Wow, 500 MIPS is the fastest. So that's a very, very fast mainframe. That's about a mainframe from about 2005, 2006. That's what we're emulating right now. So we're, we're about 12 years behind. Okay. So it's installing, and I guess this will take a little while again. So I don't want to bore you. I'll freeze it again. Um, yeah. So this is now writing stuff to the disk, as you can see here. Make this a little bigger. And then we see how many IOs have gone to this disk here. Very good. We're now doing heavy IO writing stuff to the disk, 1000 IOs per second. So this is going fast now. Let's check what it's doing. Yeah, so I'll freeze it here again and then we'll resume towards the end when we're IPLing the installed base then again.
Okay, folks, so uh, we're almost at the end of this, um, as I was saying about, um, how much is it? Let's see here, 500 billion instructions uh, into this installation procedure and about 75 minutes into this, we're almost there. Oh, installation is complete. So yeah, so we got there. As you can see, this took about 75 minutes. I have uh, a, a fast little beast here, my Intel NUC, Intel NUC 7th generation i7. That's what I'm running this on. Uh, let's see here what Amazon says. Yeah, so this has, um, it's DDR4 RAM, which is faster RAM. Uh, this is an i7-7567U um, with NVMe disk, which is the, the thing that makes the big difference. I was, uh, by the way, as I was writing this, um, somebody was posting some comments, and which is funny, so he's going to see himself now here. I think it's him. Uh, where is this? Uh, Z Linux. So he was posting a comment on my video <laughs> on this video about installing about installing uh, uh, the Linux under Hercules here he is where is he um, so no it's actually not here so let's see here yeah, so I think it's here. So I can't find it right now, but this gentleman was posting about he was installing the exact same thing, system on the Hercules and it took him about four and a half hours. And I told him, well, um, I'm, I'm installing it as you're commenting on this uh, video and it's going a little faster, but it's still slow. So it's about an hour and a half. And I told him that the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this again on um, on a real mainframe on a Z13 I have access to with ZVM and I'm gonna install it under ZVM and see how fast it goes there. One more thing I want to do is I don't really need Ubuntu 1804 which is the latest and greatest. Um, I can probably do with a 1604 image and so you can download from the same place. I'm gonna put the, this links here in the description below the video so you can go and download. A 1604 is plenty good. There's some things I don't like in the newest version of Ubuntu 1804 such as the whole network setup has changed once again. Now it's called something called NetCap which you have to use to configure with an XML, uh, it's, it's, it's messy. So 1604 is probably good enough and it's slimmer and works better under Hercules because it's not as heavy. So if I had to do this all over again, I would probably install this guy here. Anyway, so we got this done. Let's see uh, what else we need to do to get this uh, booted. Okay, this is almost done now. Let's remove this window. Connection closed, yeah. So this has now stopped. And so why don't we just um, stop this machine by pressing P, stop everything. And now we say L IPL from C, from DASDC. And let's see what it says. Yeah, so it's starting to come up. It says, this is the console because it's, of course, it has to be a scrolling console and the 3270 doesn't help here. You need the 3215 console. Also, when you define it as a guest machine under ZVM, you, you use a 3215 console. So it's starting to come up here. Yes, so this is Linux coming up. And what we can do in the meantime is we can start pinging the instance inside and so once TCP IP is up it will, will start to get answer an answer back to our pings whenever I say ping <laughs> I imagine like submarines pinging other submarines like I was recently watching the hunt for Red October and they send these pings ping and then yeah, that sound it's always what I imagine when I say I'm pinging 
something. Nothing yet. It's just. Uh, oh, actually. Okay, like this. Let's see here. The system's quite busy. 33, 60,000 interrupts a second on this little nook. It's just amazing how fast these little machines are. And they're very cheap. Okay, something is coming up. And I can already tell you that by looking at this and looking at the Debian I had installed, for which I have a video, M34, that Debian is already is it's quite faster in coming up than uh, than Ubuntu. So I'm probably going to do one more install with uh, Ubuntu 1604 instead of uh, 1804. Is there anything going on there? Okay, so this is somehow up now. Hmm. Okay, so I'll log in now here because uh, I don't want you to see the password I had given it, and I'll uh, and I'll see to establish networking. I'll be right back. Okay, folks, uh, I'm back. And uh, all I had to do is just reboot it. I didn't have, I didn't shut down Hercules all the way. And so when it came up, it didn't come out um, cleanly because I had not shut down Hercules. So I just shut down the machine by logging in from the, from the uh, console here with, with the prefix of a dot always. As you can see here, we're in 64 bit mode in Z mode. Uh, logged in and uh, set the password for root, changed the root, all from within the console and then and then uh, shut down the machine properly because I, didn't, I wouldn't want to just yank the power from the virtual mainframe. May, it may not come up nicely anymore. So I did that shut down, started up, and here we are. So now um, what I can do is still have my network configured here with my point to point interface. So I can just do uh, what was the, well, I can just do. go in uh, let's see if this works yes so we're in this is actually the first time I'm logging in through the network and uh, let's uh, look at the kernel it's 415 this is an, a 64-bit kernel the Debian that I have a video of, uh, M34, is actually a 31-bit version of uh, Linux. So this is the first time I'm running a 64-bit Linux here. Um, and uh, what else can we do? Um, do we have a HTOP? No, we don't have that. So let's first of all see what kind of network or configuration we have. We don't have a IF config. Ah. So we have this. And do we have connectivity to the router? Yes. So let's do first of all apt uh, install net tools htop and and so we have a little bit of management capability. Uh, oh, I'm not root. Let me become root apt install. What is it called? Um, net tools and htop. That's what I need here. So it's now reaching out to Ubuntu to Canonical through the network. So what's right doing right now is uh, Linux inside inside Hercules is reaching out through the channel to channel adapter to the Linux running and underneath Hercules. Uh, of course, that itself is running as a virtual machine of VMware. And so from there, it's reaching out through to the hypervisor, to ESX. From ESX, it's reaching out to the hardware, 
um, network interface and from there it's going through my firewall to the router and from the router to the internet so we have now yes so we have SCL SLCA 0 is our interface um, we have HTOP as you can see here we have uh, four CPUs uh, performance is actually not bad I'm still gonna go and install Hercules 16.04 because that's gonna be a little bit faster it's a little bit thinner um, and uh, not as have the instruction path is shorter to get things done but uh, one thing we could do here now just to make uh, things even more interesting install Hercules why not so we now install Hercules on Z Linux which is running on top of Hercules which is running on Linux which is running on ESX which is running on a tiny little Intel knock which is about $400 so if that is not amazing I don't know what is so we got this done um, this is going to install just fine and what we could do now is install uh, yet another Linux on top of this Hercules running inside Z Linux on top of Hercules so we could do this and it's going to of course it's going to go um, uh, uh, it's going to go slower and slower because each time there's the overhead of emulating a mainframe so it's going to be about 100 times slower so if it took now 70 minutes it's going to take about um, about uh, 7,000 uh, minutes to, to execute it would take many hours to install yet another uh, Ubuntu here on top inside the emulation but it would work uh, there's no reason why it wouldn't work by the way many of the things that um, that uh, don't run don't run as nicely on top of Hercules. If they run on the ZVM, they will run much nicer. So, um, so this is it. I really don't know what else to show. Uh, this is running just fine, and I showed the instructions how to do it. If you if the video was going too fast, just freeze and look at the steps. I'll put in a several links in the description below this video, so you can go download stuff and and even this website from this. Uh, from this gentleman uh, I think he also has a video um, I'll maybe link also to his video I haven't looked at it yet I did I did things a little different than him uh, one thing I did by the way is that I have a bigger um, a bigger DASD he had only a 3 gigabyte which is really not enough so I took a bigger one we could now just add another one and make the, let's say put home under the second DASD that would be very easy to do it's just normal Linux commands but now we have at least a bigger uh, 6.8 gigabyte um, uh, DASDI to work with which probably is enough for most uh, little things we want to do on a, on a on a Ubuntu running on top of Hercules but this is it um, post all these things in the description below the video uh, if you had fun watching me please press on the thumbs up button if you haven't subscribed to the motion mainframe channel yet i would urge you to do so now and please come back again in the future for future videos take care and goodbye